Welcome to Contemporary Retirement. Contemporary Retirement is a public interest program focused on the retirement community. Every program has segments on legal, financial, and health issues affecting the retirement community. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a major grant from the Family Heritage Trust Company. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored by Family Heritage Trust Company. The Family Heritage Trust Company is an independent bank chartered trust company established by local professionals to provide fiduciary services including fee-based investment advice, trust services, retirement planning, and tax planning. The Family Heritage Trust Company is committed to client service in our communities. For more information, call the Family Heritage Trust Company at 301-631-5900. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a grant from R. Thomas Murphy & Associates, P.C. R. Thomas Murphy & Associates is one of Franklin County's leading law firms, emphasizing estate, trust, elder law, and medical assistance planning. Welcome to Is a Legal Feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various legal issues which are of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Tom Murphy from the R. Thomas Murphy Law Firm with offices in Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McConnellsburg. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good morning, Mike. Tom, we're kind of wrapping up a sequence on the role of the elder law attorney. And one of the differentiations we always want to talk about is the difference between an estate planner and an elder law attorney. When you and I were both principally focused on estate planning 20 years ago, you know, we would write powers of attorney, and the chances are that document might not get used for years and years afterwards. Mm -hmm. And people wouldn't even realize that things would have changed or maybe it wouldn't work as well. But we as elder law attorneys are tending to represent people 20 to 30 years older than the people we represented when we were estate planners. Absolutely. And we write that document, that document is likely to get used in the near term. Absolutely, and so it better be right, and it should be looked at pretty regularly just to make sure it's current and has all the important provisions that, th that the law requires. And we find that most estate planners are not particularly well versed on power of attorney law because they're really focused on death issues. And whereas, mm -hmm. you know, we as L law attorneys are aware that there's a mountain of problems going on right now. These money center institutions, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make any difference whether it's banks, brokerage houses, retirement company agencies, mm -hmm. are pushing back. They do not want to accept powers of attorney. Absolutely. They want it to, you know, bless them and give them absolution from any risk or liability and so they always assume that someone using the power of attorney is up to no good and so it's it's a challenge there you gotta have your your eyes dotted and your t's crossed well and you would think this document should be simple to implement but in fact you were recently sharing a story with me that a retirement agency a major one was not willing to accept a power of attorney. Right, and you know, part of that was because they had done things that resulted in major lit litigation, so they're hypersensitive. And so the, the good outcome of that interaction is that we were able to get them to acknowledge and accept the POA, but we, we did it before there was a crisis. And so anybody out there ought to make sure whoever they're interacting with is gonna accept and rely on and, and, and salute your, your representative. And, you know, Marilyn, if you use the statutory form, financial institutions are required to accept it. Yet we're seeing attorneys every day not using the statutory form. Mm -hmm. The statute doesn't say you must use it, but the failure to use it results in a high probability it's not going to work. Emphasis, it's not going to work. Exactly. And so you find out usually when you're, it's most critical, and if you can't use it, you can't fix it in most cases. And so, you know, Pennsylvania's had a statutory form for many years. Mm -hmm. The irony is, is that Pennsylvania had a statutory form sooner than Maryland. So you, would, you could use the Pennsylvania form in Maryland fairly easily, <laughs> but you couldn't use the Maryland form in Pennsylvania very easily. But Maryland adopted its own statutory form. Now Pennsylvania doesn't work well here, nor does <laughs> Maryland work well in PA. It's a bizarre system. So that's where it's critical that you have your documents in order. And if you're interacting in two or more states, you ought to have multiple sets of documents that work in each state. And you know, and that's what an elder law attorney's know. We're experiencing this stuff. We're dealing with disabilities all the time. We're dealing with the fact that this document is not a hypothetical document. We're actually going to have to use it, and, mm -hmm. and we have constant exposure to understanding the problems associated with the implementation of it. Absolutely. And so it's, it's the important one, and it, you really need to spend the time and effort to make sure it's perfect. And the problem is, is you have both in Pennsylvania and Maryland, the statutory form 
just taking off the internet is not going to allow you to do medical assistance planning. You would think that it would, but the reality is you have the document there that's really designed to let you do business deals, but not to make transfers for no consideration gifts. Exactly. And some of those unwritten things are the most important things you need to have written out in your document. And so a Maryland power of attorney says you can do everything permitted by law. Everybody would think it's everything. Right, it's right. not. It's everything permitted by law provided you are preserving and enhancing the person's assets. Mm. Are you preserving and enhancing the person's assets when you're giving them away? Well, the argument made is no, you're not. And so you end up in fights with state agencies who want to contest that verbiage. Well, and it's not going to work for conveyance of real estate. A title company is not going to accept a gift done by power of attorney unless the power of attorney specifically authorizes that gift. Right, and some states require even more specific language than that. And so if that's the case, you may want to include it now while you can do that rather than finding out the hard way. And of course, Pennsylvania has a trap for you because it's making reference to some non, not on the document itself, and you better understand what those code sections are. And if you're going to be able to have unlimited gifting, you had better have the right language in there. You don't have it. Yeah, and the state's pretty good at picking that up, and they review almost every POA that, that comes across their desk through a Medicaid application. And if it's not right, they're going to push back. Tom, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. You're welcome. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Few things in life are as important as family. Leave your insurance worries to us. Write Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. Every life that meets its end leaves a heart for love to mend. Sister, brother, family, friends are left to carry on. When the loss seems more than you can bear, it's nice to know that we at Double Save Fiery Funeral Home, we care. Call Ed Lowe to help put your mind at ease. Welcome to the special guest feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various issues which are of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Paul Sweeney, President of Quality First Insurance Agency. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thanks for having me this morning, Mike. Paul, as we always mention, you're not an automobile casualty agent primarily. No. Um, my agency has been around since 1992. We specialize in products for people that are retired. Whether it be supplemental, mm -hmm. you will provide assistance in the prescription, but you don't really sell those. No, things we'll, we'll help anybody navigate through the Medicare system and also through the long term care system. And then, of course, long term care insurance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, one of the great crises, in my opinion, that we're seeing right now is these insurance companies have raised some of the premiums, but the, the, really the disaster premium increases that we've seen pretty much we think are gone right now. Those mm -hmm. companies, there were a bunch of companies 20 years ago selling policies, ended up in receivership, conservatorship, and people had really massive price increases. But the standard companies that have been around 25 years actively in this business, those price increases had not been nearly as bad as people might think. No, and um, those particular companies are in it for the long haul, so you're going to see more stable rates with those particular carriers. And when a rate increase does happen, um, you should really look at it very carefully before you make any kind of decisions on changing the policy benefits. Well, you know, my particular policy, I've had you know, 15 years now, you know, and it's gone up maybe 20% in that 15 years. Mm -hmm. And you say, yeah, but the cost of care has doubled in that mm -hmm. period of time. And so sometimes people just get too focused on the premium, not understanding the risk. Yeah, you're right, Mike. When uh, people bought policies 15 years ago, they were looking at normally a benefit that was probably going to be about $130 to $150 a day. Now the cost for long-term care is closer to $300 a day, sometimes more than $300 a day. And you made a very wise decision by adding something called an inflation rider to your coverage, which means that the benefit has been growing for the 15-year period to keep pace with that. 
most of the people that we talk to, we advise them to go with the inflation uh, rider. It's going to cost a little bit more to have that, but it's going to pay the benefit when you actually need it. But one of the problems that we've had is we've had these companies coming back, offering people the opportunity to reduce their coverage in order to avoid a premium increase. Mm -hmm. And almost all of those choices from my role as a legal advisor make no sense because they typically have money in investments, they have money in savings accounts, they have money in annuities mm -hmm. that they could have easily paid it. They just get irritated and refuse to pay it. That's true. That's true. And many times there'll be a recommendation from the insurance companies to how to keep the premiums lower. but. There are a lot of different options that you can choose from, and it's very difficult to understand what those um, alternatives are that they're giving you. I, I can tell you from you know, first-hand knowledge, I've reviewed a couple of them, I've read them, and I wasn't sure that I understood what they were offering them, and I had to make several phone calls to clarify what it was. Well, and not only that, but you know, the risk is increasing every mm -hmm. year. Uh, you, you're getting the benefit of all those previously paid premiums. You don't want to give away that benefit that you've accumulated. And the reality is, is most of these people that I'm dealing with aren't spending their, all their income anyway. They're saving and it just offends them. But the reality is they got to look at the risk that they're mm -hmm. taking. When you look at a nursing home in excess of $300 a day, in-home care can cost twice as much as a nursing home. An agency at $22 an hour is $500 a day. Mm -hmm. You know, people do, you need to kind of have a calm realization that you could have a heck of a problem here. Yeah, and, and I think people don't really understand how to access the benefits of a long-term care policy. And again, we've talked about this before, a lot of people are in denial. They're thinking that they're never going to use the policy or they don't really want to use the policy. So they're thinking, why should I pay this extra premium? But the reality is, as we get older, as we age, the likelihood of you needing benefits increase dramatically. If an 80-year-old came into my office without long-term care and said, hey, Mr. Sweeney, I would like to buy a long-term care policy, I don't know that I could find a company to be willing to accept that risk at this point. Well, you're just too old. Right. And you certainly can't get it after a diagnosis. People mm -hmm. think that somehow they can wait and buy it later. And the reality is you have to buy the coverage when there's no obvious mm -hmm. problem or else you're not going to be able to get insured. Right, so once you have it, it, you really got to think long and hard before you make any changes to that coverage. If there is a rate increase, in most cases, 99% of the time, you should probably pay the extra premium, continue with the policy, because if you do need the coverage, it's going to be there. That's why you bought it in the first place. We have a statistic that we banter around all the time is that most policies, when they go into claim, the person recovers all of the premium within about three months of mm -hmm. the claim. Absolutely, because if you're talking about a benefit of you know, $10,000 a month in less than a year, you know, you're talking over $100,000, so in three months you're going to get $30,000, $40,000 back. And most people haven't paid that premium. Paul, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. Thanks for having me, Mike. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Tranquility at Fredericktown Assisted Living and Memory Care provides a warm, home-like atmosphere that promotes daily life enrichment. At Tranquility, our medical director is a geriatric physician. Our professionals support and understand the various stages associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. We have on-site physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as around-the-clock licensed nurses. For more information, give Tranquility at Fredericktown a call today, because everyone deserves great care. Let us do the caregiving so you and your loved one can embrace life again. Guys, I thought you were supposed to be working in the yard. But Dad, just one more bid on HurleyAuctions.com. If you haven't visited HurleyAuctions.com, you don't know what you're missing. Whether you're buying or selling, antique cars, tractors, boats, or real estate, you can do it all at HurleyAuctions.com. Get to know Dr. Carrie Hesley at Diagnostic Imaging Services. What I find most rewarding is caring for women through our Women's Imaging Center. We have a caring staff that will ease patients through an ultrasound, bone densitometry, breast biopsy, or mammogram. Our health team is sensitive to emotions involved in women's imaging and understands that every woman is at risk for breast cancer. Providing the community with a center that is so dedicated to breast health and the imaging needs of women is something special. DIS Women's Imaging Center, providing women with progressive care. Welcome to Contemporary Health Scene. Contemporary Health Scene focuses on the health issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Gabriella Henry, resident care coordinator. 
Greenfield Assisted Living. Welcome to the show, Gabby. Good morning. How are you? Gabrielle's too hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In any event, uh, what is a residential care coordinator? Residential care coordinator, um, I work, work closely with the health care coordinator to ensure that we have adequate staffing to meet all of the needs of our residents within the community. All right, so those have got to be focuses because obviously you have a number of different needs with the people that are there and it's the, not only the needs of the people who are being provided for but to make certain that you have the appropriate staffing. Yes. yes. Tell us a little bit about your background. So my background, I have a bachelor's in biology. Um, I've worked in numerous um, nursing homes, assistant living facilities as a CNA, GNA, and um, recently I have obtained my master's degree in healthcare administration. Um, my focus has been on the elderly population and, and to ensure that they have the quality of life and dignity during their um, end few years. And of course, uh, managing people can be somewhat difficult, particularly if they're suffering from the afflictions of dementia, and that happens to be a specialty of your facility. Tell us a little about that. Yes, so our facility is focused on dementia and Alzheimer's residents. Um, as my role, we ensure that there are continuous training with our staff to um, have adequate care and quality care. Um, so yeah, we have continuous training. All right, so part of that is, is as you're bringing people on board, you obviously have to look and make sure there's appropriate staffing in every level. And your facility provides somewhat of a unique challenge because of the fact that even though it's you know 50 some beds are in that range you have three separate neighborhoods what's that mean so our three separate neighborhoods they're separated through um, different levels of dementia um, we have three levels um, so that our residents can age in place um, if they would move from one level to another level um, our wings are set up kind of simu similar so that they can age in place and no no confusion we have um, rotating staff so there are no new faces um, all of our staff are really um, close to our residents and they have compassion and care towards them well, and I think one of the great challenges is, is that I'm in facilities where they have everybody together. So they have the highest functioning people in the dementia unit with the lowest functioning people. And I look at that and say, that cannot set well with that high functioning dementia patient. Yes, so that's why we separate them. But then we also combine some of the residents and some of the activities so that we ensure, ensure that no one is left out in any activities um, because a lot of our residents are able to do all of the activities and we don't want to leave anyone out. And of course, as we're entering into the summertime here, there's some other opportunities. We have Director Greg pull up some pictures here, but yes. I know that one of the unique features of your facility is, is the fact that they can go outside and, they're, and they don't have that sense of being contained. Yes, so we have a fenced in courtyard with, um, as you can see, beautiful shrubbery winding um, pathways that they can go out and walk. Um, we've also started a couple of gardens um, and herb gardens. Um, I believe that these activities are really good to stimulate the mind, especially with dementia residents. And particularly if you have a person who has you know, spent a lifetime gardening yes. in their own garden, you don't want to deprive them of that opportunity. Exactly. Or for those who have not, never gardened before, it kind of stimulates their mind where they are learning something new. What I like about this is that you can actually look from the care providing out into this pat or area so that the person does not have to have somebody hovering over them in yes. order to be outside. Exactly. And then of course? The air garden. <laughs> the herb garden, that's yeah. great. And so that gives them a chance to plant. Yes, and, the and residents had a lot of fun doing this outdoors. Well, I guess if you use uh, any of them you use for cooking. Oh, yes, yeah. We're going to give them to the kitchen, yes. So <laughs> our residents are very happy that their, our herbs are going to be used in the kitchen. All right, so as we talk about this, one of the things I think is important about your facility, when I'm in other facilities, sometimes I get a sense that the staff you know, is working at both people who are fully, you know, functioning mentally and then working with people who are not with the combined within the same unit. Sometimes you get a sense that the people in the dementia unit may not be committed to being there. Yes, so uh, my role is to make sure that we have adequate staffing and to remind them of why we're here, the service we per, um, provide, where we have to have compassion, um, patience, and that we are all caring for our residents and our main focus is them and their needs. But at Greenfield, the reality is you're working in a fully dementia facility. Yes. It's not, you know, it's a choice that you've made. It's yes. not as if one day you could pick which side of the building you're going to be on. This one here, you have to be committed to it. Yep, you have to be committed at all days, all shifts, all hours. And of course, your role, part of training is, is that obviously you can't have registered nurses or so forth serving the staff. You're going to have to take people and to train them in order to be effective in this environment. Yes, so we um, provide an orientation training to ensure that all of our new staff, um, whether they have experience or no experience, that they have obtained the um, adequate training. 
I have to tell people every day is when I'm evaluating a facility and I walk in a facility, everybody looks at the lobby and the pretty furniture and everything. The first thing I look is the staff. Yes. If the staff is smiling, then mm -hmm. this has the potential of being a good facility. If the staff is not smiling, I'm immediately on guard. <laughs> Same. Um, well, our staff is actually enrolled in a lot of our activities, so they're having fun with our residents as well. It's more of like a family-based environment where they can interact with each other. It's not just care. It's um, a lot of activities and cooking and gardening, as you could see outside in the courtyard. So um, I ensure that it's fun. Gabby, I want to thank you for taking time to appear thank on our Thank you program. very much. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. The Community Foundation has helped create signs of community strength for more than 30 years. Scholarships assist with post-secondary education and grants support programs throughout Frederick County. Making a big impact. Because of generous donors like you. Add your sign of community strength by creating a fund that supports the causes you care about. Albright, Crumbacker, Mal, and Itell are a full-service firm that provides elder care services including managing incoming bills, bill payment, depositing checks, balancing bank statements, and preparing, planning, and filing personal tax returns. Put your mind at ease and call us today. Welcome to the Making Sense feature on Contemporary Retirement. Making Sense focuses on the financial issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Christian Wright, President of Wright Gardner Insurance. Welcome to the show, Christian. Thank you, Michael. Now, a lot of the people that are watching the program use what we are called, you know, sort of the cookie cutter carriers, the standard mm -hmm. carriers. Why would somebody consider using an independent agent? All right. Well, uh, there, there, there's several reasons, and, and I think first and foremost is that an independent agent is not beholden to one insurance company, um, which is actually a benefit to your viewers because that independent agent um, is, is beholden to the customer. So if there's a problem with a certain insurance company, that independent agent can very quickly move the insurance or quite frankly they can find uh, coverage for basically whatever someone may need. And it's a very interesting separation. They use the same word, but it means mm -hmm. something totally different. When you're with a common carrier, mm -hmm. uh, they are actually an agent of the company. They right. represent the company and selling the customer products. Right. But an independent agent does not represent the company. It represents the customer. Right, right, right. And so that's... Um, it's a very interesting distinction. Most people don't recognize that, uh, but it can it can really uh, have its pluses and its and its minuses uh, because um, if if that agent only represents the one insurance company, um, again they're stuck with them and and very can be very limiting at times. One of the things that we find is is you look at the insurance industry. Nobody's good at everything. In fact, is each company has strengths and weaknesses. And one of the benefits of dealing with an independent agent is you can identify the needs of the customer and focus them with a company that has strengths in that particular coverage. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, th that, that's a great point, Michael, because um, the independent agents like ourselves, like at Wright Gardner, um, we, we've aligned ourselves with certain insurance companies to fit needs of, of clients. Um, and then many times clients may have a unique need and we can find an insurance company who, who will underwrite that risk. Um, and so the answer of no, you, you don't get no too often from an independent insurance agent. The common carriers, those names that most people recognize, have a standard policy. That's what you're getting. You're not going to be able to negotiate it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very cookie cutter. You can change um, the numbers, but you can't negotiate the policy. That's exactly right. And, that's, and that can be very frustrating uh, because not everyone, as we've talked on the show, everyone's the same. Their homes are different. Their lifestyles are different. Their needs are different. Now, you've underwritten my personal insurance through a very large international custom carrier, mm -hmm. and their attitude is, We'll cover it any way you want to cover it. It's just simply an actuarial assessment yep. of the cost, but you can have any coverage you want. Yeah, they'll, they'll cover you whatever you want, wherever you want. And, uh, you know, I, th I think sometimes people have the idea that, well, that may be too expensive. Well, that's not the case. That's simply not the case. And in, in your particular situation, you know, there was a need uh, to have coverage uh, outside of a typical coverage territory. And this insurance company said, no problem, we'll take care of that. Well, in particular, I tell people, if you're driving a car in Europe or out in Mexico, you have no coverage yeah. under any common carrier. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's, that's one of the biggest 
uh, sticking points that we see with the common carriers. Um, so it's really important that, that, that policyholders, your viewers, speak to their insurance agent. You know, when they may travel to Europe, they need to talk to their insurance agent to make sure that their insurance company can provide coverage. And they probably will find out if it's with a common carrier they can't. If they're fortunate enough to be with an independent insurance agent or maybe they need to speak with someone, um, they can get that coverage before they leave the states and therefore they don't have to worry about it. Now, I deliberately left Canada out because some common carriers cover in Canada, some don't. One of the largest common carriers in this region does not cover you in Canada. That means going over the bridge at Niagara yeah. Falls to look at Niagara Falls from the Canadian side, which is better, you have no coverage. Yeah, we, we've talked about that several times in your program. Um, the typical coverage territory is the United States, Canada, and the United States possessions. But that's not always the case because insurance companies, um, like, you're, like you're mentioning, there are, there's one that I know of in particular that absolutely does not cover in Canada. And people assume it's coverage, but we know what assuming does, and, and that's, that's not where we want our clients to be. One of the great problems we have in this region is we have so many states that are close together. Mm -hmm. And when you use the common carrier, you're forced to go to an agent in each state because they're protecting their territories. Yet you can write a policy covering all of the states and all of their properties no matter right. where they're located. Right. Again, that's another great benefit to having an independent agent is, you know, if you have multiple locations, cross state board uh, lines and here, I mean, we're very close, obviously, um, you know, we can take care of that with one insurance company to write it all to simplify it, also to improve coverage, um, claims assistance and things like that. Otherwise, you may find yourself having to deal with multiple insurance agents, which can be very confusing and, quite frankly, can sometimes cost more. Christian, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. Thank you, Michael. Thank you from Contemporary Retirement. Remember a more carefree time? Leave your insurance worries to us, Wright Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. These days it seems like everything's online and filling out claim forms and receiving and paying bills online isn't always easiest. That's why we at Quality First Insurance encourage you to just give us a call. Let us help. Hi there. I'm Paul Sweeney with Quality First Insurance and it's still just as simple. Our offices are open every weekday where you'll be able to call and speak to real live people. No detail was missed. I'm so glad that I turned to Quality First Insurance. I'd recommended Quality First Insurance to my friends who've been just as satisfied. If you're not happy with what you're paying for Medigap, or more importantly, not happy with your service, give us a try. We're locally owned, and we take the time to provide you with the best. We are Quality First Insurance, and our mission is to provide quality products to quality people. Pick up the phone and give us a call today at 800-745-1411.